Hey! Today we will see a workflow for in painting that is adapted to the Flux Dev model. This workflow allows you to make changes to very small parts of the image and still get quality and a good combination of the change in the original image. This workflow is similar to the workflow I uploaded before and is adapted to SDXL. With two significant differences, the InPaint for SDXL allows us to work with ControlNet, something that really helps the model to understand the environment, perspective, and context, which we still don't have when working with the Flux model. On the other hand, Flux's InPaint allows us to work with text, which is a big advantage that Flux has over SDXL. You will of course find all the links, including the link to the SDXL in painting, in the description of the video. Here we have the models, of course, the Flex Dev, the Clip, and the VE. Remember that with this model we are limited in the commercial use we can make at work. Here, of course, we have the load image, the image we want to in painting. In this window you also press the right button and simply draw the area you want to change. As you can see, I put it on a negative just to make it easy for me to see, but it's completely up to you. Notice that with this workflow, you can change very, very small areas, like this label, and still get very good accuracy and quality, even though it's a very small area. In this group of nodes, we simply cut this mask that we drew here and the image according to that mask. This is what we see here. The image after cutting and enlarging is sent to VAE and latent noise mask. Let's just understand what's going on here. We have one node that only shows us the sizes. I used it when I built the workflow, but I left it anyway. Here are two mask crop region nodes. It looks a bit strange, and let's understand why they are both here. When you use the mask crop region, one of the data you need to define is the padding which is the space between the mask and the frame of the image. The padding depends a lot on the size of the mask you drew and the size of the image in terms of the number of pixels. I use a node with padding zero, the width of the mask I drew in pixels, and I multiply the number by 0.2. In other words, I add a margin of 20% of the width of the mask. You can of course play with this number. And in this case, we got that the padding is equal to 16. This is simply to help the model better understand the context of the object we want to receive. From here, we cut both the image and the mask. As you can see, I use image crop. It simply takes the width, the height, and the X and Y from this image. And this is the cut we get, according to the same mask we created. And here we see the mask after its enlargement. An important figure that you should pay attention to is the mask blur, which allows us to blur the mask. Notice that in the amount I set it to 200, which is a lot. From the many attempts I've made, it really helps the differential diffusion to better understand the context, the nearby pixels, and create a complement that is much more harmonious and integrates in a better way with the original image. Here we have the prompt. It seems that our prompt is very complicated and complex, but our prompt is relatively simple. You can see it here in show text, all in all, photo of the word flux on a white jar, high quality detail. If we look for a moment, here we have the basis of the prompt, photo of triple X, YYY, high quality, and if we enlarge it, we will see that it has a continuation. With the help of these text find and replace nodes, we replace the triple X with the object we want to add, in our case the word flux. And this text goes in here, and here we do text find and replace, and replace the YYY with the context. In this case, white jar. It is important to add the context, so that the model will have a better understanding of the environment of that object. This text goes into clips text and code. And all this together with our latent and the mask goes to latent space. Here we have a new flux guidance node. If we take a look at the comfy blog, I will of course put a link to this page. You can see that we have here the flux guidance, which allows us to play with something that is a bit similar to CFG as we know it. 
The rest of the things here are quite similar to what we have already seen. There is a seed here that should be set to fixed, of course if you want to check how other things affect the result. Here you see the number of steps, and the denoise is currently at 0.91. You can play with it between 0.8 and 1. From the experiments I did, this is more or less the range that gave me the most interesting results. Of course our model goes through the differential diffusion which is the reason, as we mentioned before, that our mask with a very high blur, it helps the differential diffusion to understand the context of the new object within the existing pixels in the image. Here we see the picture that V decode gives us, it's the exact same picture, we'll soon understand why we have both. All in all, this group, and this group as well, help us connect everything to the original picture. Here we see the final result. A pretty perfect result for me. The quality of the text doesn't just drop. It's because it's a very, very small area. You can see that the quality is much better. But this is the result after we enlarge the area of the mask, and then we reduce the image back to its original size. This is a very, very small area of the mask we drew, and we return the image to this size. For that, there is the resize here. As you can see, it gets the width and height from the crop mask region, which we saw earlier. And that's why we see a relatively low quality here, because we really reduced the result that will fit into the original image properly. The image composite connects these pixels, after reducing them, exactly to the location, according to the X and Y. If we go up here, we see that we have switch, image and mask. There is image 1 and image 2 here, which are basically the same image, only the masks change, once I use the initial mask we created to connect the result we got. This is the result that we choose one switch. I can also use a mask created according to the anything segment we see here. This is also one of the reasons that our prompt is broken down in this way. Because if you notice, I use the same trump that we wrote for the object also for segment anything. If you need to create a mask based on another text, you can simply connect this node text to the prompt, just be careful not to leave it empty, because it will give you an error message. If I now select the number 2 in the switch and press Q, you can see that now we get a combination of the previous text and the new text. It's because we have this mask that the segment anything created. With these nodes, you can refine the mask manually. There is the green preview bridger, and we have the red preview bridger. In green, the first can add parts to the mask that I want. Say I want this part, draw on it, press Q, and you see that it is added to the mask. And of course, you can see this part fits into the final picture as well. If you want to remove areas from the mask, you can use the red node. Let's take down the X for a moment, just for the example, and press Q again. And we see that now we actually only have the FLU without the X, because we just deleted it. So these nodes in total help us to refine the mask manually, assuming that the original image that came out of VAE is not good enough for us. In this case it actually works very well, so we can simply choose mask number one and it will ignore all those masks. We'll simply use the original mask to combine the text on the box. So this is the workflow for in painting with Flux. I assume that in the coming days more tools will be released that will allow us to have better control over the results. And of course I will update the workflow. In the meantime, remember that there are several things here that affect the result, the mask blur, and very much affects the combination. Sometimes we will want to play with the multiple by of the padding. In the prompt it is important to write not only the object you want to receive, but also to give the context within the image. And of course with the denoise, we can play according to the proximity we want to the original image. So I hope you learned, and we will meet in the next lessons. You are more than welcome to ask questions, comment, and like if you liked it. And most importantly, have fun. Bye.